Good evening, everyone. <laughs> well, this is the Halloween edition with Bob Harris. I want to say happy Halloween first and welcome back to Wendy. Thank uh, you. We are stoked <laughs> tonight, Wendy. We have uh, Bob Harris tonight and we're hosting a one of a kind game changer. Um, I just want to take uh, this opportunity to say thank you for the sports affiliation for giving Wendy and I uh, this wonderful platform for Iggy, JC, the whole crew uh, for believing in us and for uh, their continuous support. Wendy, tell us, how are you feeling tonight now that Bob Harris is on the show? I cannot even tell you how I'm feeling tonight. <laughs> This is, you know, first of all, happy Halloween, everyone. Um, but here's the thing. I have stories to tell tonight, and I'm super excited. But it's an honor and a privilege to introduce our guest and my bestie. And I have the shirt to prove it, just so I do. It's it's true. Mm. Okay. I love it. <laughs> and uh, my bestie, not yours, Steve and Melina, or... <laughs> Royal Slade. Royal Slade yeah. hears feedback. I don't hear any feedback, Royal. I don't know what's going on. We don't My either. bestie, Bob Harris. <laughs> Wait a minute. So the whole Game Changers thing, I thought you guys were the Game Changers. Oh, no, we're talking to you. You're the Game Changer. We're changing games too, though. We're, we're, we're sitting here setting a new pace, uh, exploring new uh, new fertile grounds of uh, activities and entertainment uh, that no, the world has not yet seen before. So. I'm here for it and glad to be a small part of it. Oh, thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I would love to tell the story of how you became my bestie because I don't even think I you know love the story. To hear it. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> I have heard it, but go ahead. Okay. So I was watching YouTube Live, one of his YouTube lives, because he does YouTube lives all the time. I don't know how you do it. Do you sleep? I'm not sure. So anyways, I, I said, hi, Bob, you know, and, and he's reading the comments and he sees and he goes, hi, Wendy Early. And I'm like, oh, he just said hi to me. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. So I'm like, I'm going to ask a question. So I ask a question and I'm like, he answered my question. He's like, oh, yeah, Wendy Early, you want to sit so and so? And I'm just like, Oh my God, that's it. We're besties. What? Okay. Well, you know what though? Come to find out he answers everyone's questions and he also says hi to everyone that says hi to him. I but do. you know what? I didn't know that at the time. So I was like, Hey, we're besties and it's just kind of stuck. So, you know, I, I was just like, if I said it enough, it was going to come true. And guess what? It came true. Perfectly that's suitable. Awesome. <laughs> Perfectly suitable, and uh, and I thought the shirt was fantastic when I uh, saw you at the expo. I was uh, I was thrilled. I uh, it was a, it was a, it's a great thing. Not everyone will take it to such great lengths, and I was very impressed. And 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 like I know that like some people might think, well, that's a little weird. I don't think it's weird at all. <laughs> Do people <laughs> think that really? I think people think it's a little weird. Some people have said it might be a little weird. Those people are mistaken. Oh, thank you. And Rick I asked Kellogg you. says it. Rick <laughs> Kellogg says it all the time. You are his best bestie. Listen, I'm Bob, can you, you. See, can you see under her handle what you have? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's always on there. <laughs> it's oh, always course, on yes. there. <laughs> so I, I thank you for that. You made me feel like, hey, this person, you know, I, I felt special. So, But, but I, I still feel special because you truly have been a trooper over this. And uh, I did ask. Uh, I was just like, hey, is this over the top? Am I bugging you? And he's like, heck no. You know, you're totally fine. So everyone, it's not weird, okay? <laughs> no, not that weird. Really, not. No, hi, Sally. <laughs> yeah, hi to everybody in the comments. You, you oh my gosh. just messy, Sally saying. That's awesome. I love Thank it. Thank you. I love you know, it. we need to have Bob on every week. Everyone's here to watch you, Bob. Look at this. Nobody ever comes on this show to see. I think they're here to see the show. I don't think it has anything to do with me. I feel like I'm just like I'm cashing in on the popularity of this fantastic show, and that's what I that's what it's all about. Oh, that's we awesome. appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> so let's go with the um, you know, with everything that's um, talking about the expo and everything. Um, how did you start uh, with the expo, Bob? Can you um, do you care to start? Sure. How everything started uh, with Bob, and I know it's two Bob. So how Bob everything started yeah. with you, and Bob Long, 
and um, take it from there. So Bob Lung, so I, I believe it was Bob Lung and, and, and Brad Evans were trying to, you know, kind of came together. They were both trying to put together kind of a league where it represented the best of the best, all the big names and all in one contest. And, and so they kind of got together and cobbled together the King's Classic uh drafts and it's a couple leagues and so we the, before there was an expo there was a king's classic and we went for i want to say it was two or three years before uh there was actually an expo involved i guess it was two years um and we go and we'd all stay at the same hotel and everyone would hang out and we'd all sit in the same you know little dingy breakfast diner at the embassy suites and and it was a great time. And we, you know, there was probably, you know, two leagues worth of us. And it, it was just a good meeting of people that you've worked with all the time. And Bob put it all together. And we do the drafts in the actual Hall of Fame and, you know, right next to the bus room for, for one league and in the gold jacket room for the other league. And it was just a great time. And then a couple of years in, you know, Bob said, hey, I'm going to put together an expo and we'll see how it goes. And so, you know, I, you know, since I was going to already be there, I thought, yeah, I'll take part in this and, you know, did some panels and had a booth and, you know, and, and it was a pretty, pretty good, pretty good turnout. I thought it was a, a surprising turnout. It wasn't like anything like what we've seen like last year or even the year before, but it was really positive and Bob had a great time. I like to make Bob cry at the end of each expo. Uh, I usually interview him for the radio shows and, and get him on and make him cry and tell him how successful it was. And look, it's a big, long, you know, intense process for him and his family. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, yeah. you know, the emotions are right up at the surface. And by the way, it's Greg's daughter's birthday. Yes. Happy, yes. Birthday, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Paula. Happy birthday, Paula. And Paula, you know what? That's my middle name. Paula That's is my middle awesome. name. <laughs> um, and so, and so, uh, so the, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of the, the, how it morphed out and, and it just seemed like a great, you know, I mean, at first it was almost more of like, you know, getting together in it, with industry people and colleagues and people like, like you work with so many people that you don't get a chance to meet in person, uh, you know, and, and so it was great to see how many people are taller than their avatar. I always love that part. Uh, I think that's my favorite part of getting together. Everyone looks very small on their computer. They're like normal <laughs> people size when you see them in person it's great um but but it just in general it kind of was that but then more people started going and it kind of added the twist of just meeting the people who like to consume the content and and i love that part as well i like sitting around and, and engaging with people that's a, you know a fun part of this and and the way i see the fantasy football world out there the community the people who are playing fantasy football i mean you know like people i say oh you're a fantasy football expert no I'm a fantasy football, I guess, professional would be the thing. I'm, I'm the person who makes you the expert. And that's the way I view the people out here who are consuming the content. You're the experts. You're the people who are playing. You're sitting here. And my job is to make sure you have the information you need to be an expert. So uh, I don't think there's, you know, I think we all play this game and we think, wow, I'm not as good. Yes, you are. You're doing it. You're in there. You're making the decisions. You're making the same decisions. I feel like, you know, when I get questions, on the live streams or, you know, like when Wendy comes in, oh, should I start this guy or that guy? They already know who they want to start. They just want to find out, is that crazy? Nah, probably not, you know, but, you know, that's kind of part of the fun. But I think everyone out there is kind of at an expert level that plays this game that's really involved with it. And certainly the people who show up at the, expert, at the expo are playing at that level. But And they want to, you know, take it to another level. And I think that's great. It's like when I go to a to a show and I buy the meet and greet tickets, right? I, you know, I'm already a fan, but I want to fan a little harder. Yeah. And I think the people who go to the expo, they're already totally into this. They just want to be totally a little more into it and, and have a little direct contact with the people that they use to, to that they lean on uh, to help, you know, hone their expertise. I really I mean, love how you say that everyone yeah. is an expert and you are there to help them out. It's not just you, the expert. That's really well, well said, um, Bob. Thank you for saying that. Because people don't believe in themselves and you saying that coming from you, it's really important <clears throat> and people need to hear it. Thank you for saying that. Well, I say it because for 30 years of doing this business, that's what my experience has been, right? Like the people who are interested enough to follow people who create content and, and who consume content, they're into it to a degree that they want to be good at it, right? They don't, they're not, they're not doing, putting in all this effort to study and find out other people's opinions and like, I'm a big proponent of like, 
not, you know, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm here to tell you what I would do and why I would do it. And yes. you can then, you know, you can triangulate and say, wow, I kind of thought like that a little bit myself, but I have my own little angle or twist to it, or, or I totally disagree with that. And, and the way you explain it makes me more fervent in my disbelief in what you're saying, right? I mean, it can go either way, but, but that's, that's what the purpose of, you know, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just, you know, here's what I do. Here's why I'm doing it. Here's the path I took to reach my conclusions. Uh, and, and explain myself pretty thoroughly. I think just, you know, communicating those ideas and helping people, you know, further solidify their ideas and the approaches they're taking and the things they think, that's really the goal. Hands did down, you, really. And did you, ever, did you ever think that the expo would grow the way that it has? I mean, this year, I mean, it was my first year, but I mean, that was a thing. I mean, it, it, they, they plan that all year round. They have to. Um, you know, so I'm just like, I, I didn't know from what you said from your very first to the King's Classic to what it is now, did you ever see that in your wildest dreams? No, probably. Well, no. I mean, if I'm being honest, I didn't see it, you know, the, to the point where we've gotten where it's like just it's become such a huge event. Uh, and I mean, you know, I, I expected the, the business side of it, right? I expected the people who are in the industry and who want to get out there and show their wares and do all that stuff. I mean, it's a good showcase for them, but the number of, you know, players and people who are consumers out there who wanted to come and who spend the time and the effort and the energy and, uh, and uh, are interested enough to show up. I didn't know we'd get the kind of numbers that we've got, but, but credit to Bob for putting together mm -hmm. a fantastic event, right? Like, I mean, you know, there's every year he's added more to it. It's, you know, and he's made it, more interesting, more panels, more opinions, more diversity of people that are out there telling their stories. So adding to the King's Classic Leagues as well. So uh, kudos to him and his, his entire family. They bust their ass to get that thing oh, done. Yeah, and, for sure. And for it's, sure. It's, it's like, it's no, it's no mean feat, right? I mean, they, they got a, they got a lot of things to put together. So uh, credit to, credit to Bob. And I can remember that first one where, you know, <laughs> we're talking after it. And I mean, I thought it, we we were all both probably surprised at the level of turnout and uh and uh and it was nothing compared to what we saw now so i know every year he's got to be exceedingly pleased with the way it's going and i think uh we'll see if it grows a little more this year i'm looking for i look forward to it every i look forward to it every year it's kind of like the the big moment That's where cute. i get a chance to you know like i like to i like to meet with the people that you know that you're you see out there like i'm you know i love content creators right uh, and I love what they're doing. I need them for magazines and things like that. So it's my chance to get out there and kind of rub shoulders with people and 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 enjoy, you know, just a little bit of camar camaraderie with people that you've known for many years, but you don't get to see on a daily basis. So I don't know if you see this. Uh, Royal Slade is asking you a question, Bob. You want to answer that? Um, I think a he's a lot. His comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Royal Slade is a great. Aficionado mm -hmm. and and yeah. someone who I would consider like a really good player who's just out there testing his theories and you know you know putting his putting his own thoughts out there on the line. I think that's the great things I love about my live streams about my callers on the radio show. Everyone's willing to throw out their portion and like you know if someone is crazy, I'll tell you. But for the most part, no one's crazy. I I always feel like everything is a test. Like is it crazy if I you know dot dot dot. And like 99% of the time, the answer is, no, it's totally reasonable. It's totally not crazy. And then there's that 0.1% of the time where, oh, man, that's crazy. Don't do that. You know I mean, you might say that or I, I'd never do that. But the Royal Slate is, you know, the, you know what I've come to find is, mo is the norm. And UND and I mean, so many people out there uh, that, you know, that are involved in this and just love to play it. I mean. Hardly any of them don't know, you know, though I, I, I get questions sometimes that I think, wow, that's going to change the way I think. And honestly, I'm sitting here during the day cranking out content for the website and everything. I'm pushing through news, tons of articles. I maybe write 50 articles a day or more. And the times that I stop and do shows or live streams is the time that I actually get to stop and process the information myself. And sometimes, uh, you know, I'm in the weeds. I got that tiger by the tail and it's just dragging me through the forest there. And this is my chance to stop and, and, and collect my own thoughts. And a lot of times the questions I get help me, you know, solidify or even change my opinion. I, and a lot of times the guests that I have, you know, will change the way I view things completely. 
Kelly Singh. I mean, I was talking to her. I had her on my live stream uh, from Trophy Smack, and like she had a perspective of, on something that I never even thought of. I thought, you know, she's what? so good. She's <laughs> so good. A fair point, I, and, and it changed the way I approached uh, a certain situation. So I think those are, you know, I find that that's that's what the fun part of it is for me. Well, since Royal happens to be commenting, I want to mention in the um, Bob Harris FCE2, the one that Royal and I are in together. I By the way, you, dro you dropped out last week, didn't I you, know, Bob? I, yeah. I, I usually do really good in these. This is like my worst showing, I think, in any of them. I'm still in the other ones I've done, and well, I usually end up in the top two or so, so I'm super disappointed. Like, I don't like I don't win a lot of my leagues because I got a lot going on, but those eliminators I love doing well in. And I, I love those. It, well, I just want to mention, um, yours truly had the high score this week in the FCE oh, two, cool. <laughs> and Royal and I have a side bet. Uh, whoever drops out first, because we're both still left in this, whoever drops out first is going to donate twenty five dollars to Fantasy Cares. Huh. So. Oh, you know that what you do with all of your charity work is is just amazing. So thank you for that. I was so excited to get in one of your eliminators. I, I love those eliminators. They're they're a blast. That's amazing. Talking a little bit more about um, you know Bob Long and his family and everything. I know that I spoke with him um, at the expo last time, and he was talking a lot about you, and he was um, saying how they first you know when you first um, start talking about the expo and how he was asking you uh, about what you need to uh, bring into the, uh, you know, the expo and stuff like that, there's something happening. So I'm not sure uh, from where. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more. Um, how did, um, after the King Classic happened, did you have anything um, uh, to do with the women um, classic? And what um, um, what do you see happening with the women classic as well? So um, can you I'm care okay. to share more about, yeah. I, I would love to um, um, get your opinion about the women classic more. I, I feel this. like I'm mostly a passenger on this bus that Bob Long drives. Uh, but, but I mean, like, <laughs> honestly, he's out there asking people. He talks opinion. highly about you uh, every yeah. single time. Yeah. You know, he has, he has people's opinion and I'm happy to share my opinions with him. And I felt like, you know, like, honestly, I, you know, I think everything he adds, I, I've been a fan of. Right. And I'd like to see more editions. And I've talked to him about those more editions. Like, you know, it's great to have a King's Classic. It's great to have a King's Classic. Let's have an everybody's classic. I think, well, you know, will be the next step in, in my estimation. So, you know, I've been a fan of everything he's done. And, and by the way, Pam does a great job as well. His kids do mm -hmm. just put in yeoman's That's work. Awesome. And so, but, Thanks. but, you know, he bounces things. I, I he sent an email out the other day, you know, talked about how, you know, maybe we can make some adjustments to the King's classic and, 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 and like, for the most part, they're really good ideas. And I say, yeah, it's a pretty good idea, Bob. Why don't you do that? I mean, <laughs> that's like that's like the extent of it. I'm not out here. He's the one innovating and, and coming up with all the, the thoughts. And 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 really, he does a super good job of it. And I thought I, I thought that he's brought it along nicely. I think, you know, for one thing, he's a sharp cookie and he sees yeah. the direction things are going mm -hmm. as, as it happens in real time. So like when we saw the first year, the, the Women of Fantasy panel was like a – packed house so it's standing room only and i had a chair and i'm very happy about that but you know the next year it's a bigger room i mean he you know it's not like this is a rocket science it's like oh yeah. wow look, this is working let's do more of this right so so he, again credit to him for recognizing the things that are working and, and 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 i know that like every year he looks at these things and and he makes adjustments based on what he's seeing in real time i think the the big thing for me has been that you know the the party at the tom benson stadium has been just huge and you know it's a great venue for it like this year there was rain we could all stay under the yeah. you know the concourse while it was raining and then go out after it was done and you got the field you can have games this year in the dome the all the flag games i mean every year freaking des bryant dude des bryant was there right des by the way just remains continues to be engaged with the whole community. yeah it's so, fantastic so over the years, a lot of players have really, you know, understood uh, the, the angle of fantasy. Not all of them, 
obviously. There's some who will never get it, but the ones who do really do. You think about Austin Eckler right now, Dez. I mean, there's there's plenty of them out there who get it. And I can remember talking over the years to a lot of a lot of the NFL stars who, you know, who totally got it. I mean, I can think back to Larry Johnson, the running back who like was like, man, this is this is what we're after, you know, because because I mean, from for NFL guys, they look at this like, hey, nobody can see us. Nobody knows who we are. We're anonymous. We're a, we're a helmet and pads and a number and anything that can put them in front of fans and make a better connection for them. And Larry Johnson's eyes, this is what makes a you know, this is what makes a Los Angeles Rams fan, a Larry Johnson fan. This makes a you know, and he and he was right. And this was a few years ago, back before. A lot of players really understood what it is when Jake Plummer was telling me, I don't even want to talk to you, dude. You know, and he ended up, by the way, he ended up talking to me for a long time. He said, you got five minutes before I got to go into chiropractor. <laughs> and he ended up sitting in his parking lot of his chiropractor for an hour talking. So, uh, so I just think that, you know, the growth of the industry itself, you know, intrigues people and draws people in. I mean, some of them because there's money to be made, others because like, wow, look at this huge audience that we can engage in and 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 tap into for whatever it is we're doing. It's a it's a fantastic, you know, it's it's, it's a fantastic audience, right? There's like 60 plus million people play this game and connection. Yeah. Right. And, and it's something I I said all along, you know, like when I first started doing this in 1993, <laughs> um <laughs> You know, I was, well, I was convinced that it was going to be the biggest thing ever because why wouldn't it be? It's the greatest thing, right? I love playing. And I thought there was no way everyone who ever tried to play this wouldn't love it every bit as much as me. And it seems like that's like pretty much the case. And people keep playing and loving it more. And it keeps getting more accessible thanks to technology and, you know, the things that make it easier to play. Commissioner software was a huge leap in the, in the, in the evolution. And so, all these things kind of add up and make it a great space for people who are sharp cookies, uh, who play the game or who are involved in the game business wise or whatever, uh, to get involved with a great bunch of people uh, who really love football and really love the camaraderie of fantasy football and the competitive nature of it. And I'm not saying that fantasy football saved the NFL, but fantasy football kind of saved the NFL. It changed the NFL at the very say, least. I would say yes. Cause so I was around when the NFL, I, I was around when the NFL did not like fantasy football um, and thought it was, they, I, I, I think they thought it was like the redheaded stepchild of gambling or something, right? They, they wanted nothing to do with it. And so, <clears throat> so I, I was out there working it and I was calling teams and, you know, Teams were getting calls from fantasy managers. But this was like early 90s, 95, 96. Uh, I would call a team and say, hey, you ever hear from any fantasy people? Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> we can't get rid of all these calls. So I said, well, here, I got this 800 number. Why don't you give me a little information every now and again, and I'll pass it out. You can give my number out. And they would give it out to everybody because no one wanted to get involved. But I think it was about 1997, 98 that the NFL started to realize, oh, wow, who's watching this crappy game until the very last minute? Who's spending money on things that other people don't spend money on? And, and it was us. And they figured it out. And once I, I think once, you know, the, the the combination of them, you know, blowing their promotional wind into the sales a little bit, or at least not, you know, put, you know, saying, oh, we don't even want anything to do with that. Uh, that and the commissioner software has made a huge change. It's just, you know, the access to computers. I mean, I can remember going from being an email and fact or a regular mail and fax product to going on the World Wide Web. And I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, this is game changing. But at the time, you know, like a lot of my subscribers weren't really computer savvy. So a lot of the early work that I did was teaching my subscribers how to use their computers, right? I mean, you know, and it was a great investment of my time because I mean, I could save so much money, you know, not printing and, and not mailing and not sitting there in a puddle of sweat trying to, you know, <laughs> get a billion things done when I could just hit one button and do the same amount of work. So, so yeah, there was a lot going on in that early period, but the NFL getting on board with it uh, was, was a huge deal. So talking about technology, I was last year, I saw the change, like this year I saw the change in technology. So I came last year, it was my first time I went to the expo. So I saw the board, the colors and everything. And last year, it was the first time I saw it on um, on the computer and, and the big screen. So I see that you love more technology. So what's 
with um, what did you like with the technology more than you liked with the big board? Well, I think the the technology to me is like not so much for in-person drafts because I think a big board's fine for an in-person draft, like everyone going up and putting there. We did that at the Sky Fish Bowls in the last two years of the Live Fish Bowls, but they're also on the computer. But I think it's just the ability to connect with people from everywhere, right? You don't have to be in the same room. You don't have to find 12 people who have the same five minutes or uh, you know hour to sit around in the same room. Everyone can kind of get along. It, it opened the door to slow drafting, uh, which makes it really easy to do a draft when you have eight hours to make a pick. You can be at work. You can be you know out with your family, whatever. And you can still make your pick. I think those kind of things. And 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 also you know going back to to, to pre commissioner software. You had to have somebody in your league who kind of was the scorekeeper, someone who kept the records, right? The record keeper. And, you know, they're having to write all these things down. And then people are arguing with them about over points every week. And everyone's staring at their USA Today, trying to hash out what's going on and compare each, compare notes. And and now it's all done for you. I think just making that easy. And, and what we could thank the late Kevin Austin, uh, you know, who was one of the innovators in that space, uh, who eventually ended up, started out with the CBS commissioner software, ended up with my fantasy league. Uh, with uh, Mike Hall. I mean, that really, to me, was a huge shift because, I mean, it just like it, it it opened the door for everyone just to sit there and, and just focus on playing as opposed to arguing. Like early on, all we did was argue, right? I mean, there was, a, yeah. there was an endless <laughs> argument, right? Like, and we loved it. I mean, that's part of the fun of fantasy is sitting there, you know, getting <laughs> your people. But this kind of puts the, uh, you know, kind of puts the emphasis on arguing about the people, on the players and and the outcomes, the anticipated outcomes instead of the actual outcomes. And, and you know, I think it's made a huge difference to me. And I think that, that's where there's room for growth in the future, too. I can foresee a time when we will have the, uh, you know, like software that are commissioner software that allows us to make in-game changes, right? Like somebody gets hurt and you can make a, an, an in-game movement, right? And, 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 and like really manage your team in real time. I hope that's coming. Uh, I've been thinking about it for a while and waiting for someone to come up with it. I mean, I think we're fairly close to that. Um, but, uh, you know, especially now when you got the next gen stats, all the players have the GPS chip in there. I mean, there's so much you can know when a player's on the field, when a player's not off the, not on the field. And, and uh, I think that opens the door to a lot of things. I agree. Thank you. Well, you know, I noticed your shirt there, your, your Metallica shirt, there, bestie. I have a question. I have a WWBD. <laughs> what would bestie do? So I'm opening up my Ticketmaster app the other day because I went to the Bears game on the when they played the Raiders, and uh, it was a really great, by the way. So I opened up my Ticketmaster app to look at my tickets for the Bears game, and there's my Metallica tickets in Chicago. And I've had these tickets for a year, one year already. And it's not until August of 2024. Mm. And I happened to kind of glance by the date. And it's a Friday and a Sunday show. You got back-to-back -back shows in Dallas, right? Well, no, we, they, they do a day in between. Oh, they oh, on all Friday, of them? I had a, I had a Friday and okay. Sunday as well. And I think that's We're, their, okay. their right. modus operandi. On this. I just thought maybe something was going on at Soldier Field. But okay. So I'm just like, oh, those dates look awful familiar. And I looked and, I, and I, my heart dropped as soon as I saw it. And I'm like, that's the expo. Well, I think there's only one answer to this, right? The answer is to go to Bob's house and beat his ass until he changes the dates of the expo. Because clearly, you already have. Tickets. He should. I've had these tickets for so long, and I'm like, right? It, not it might be your last chance, right? I mean, we don't know how much more touring they're going to do. I mean, I've you seen know. them. That's the one thing is I, I have really seen them seen before. This show. I know. <laughs> You're not helping. I'm not. I'm not going to be any help on this one at all. I was like a little panicky because I too got Metallica tickets long in advance of these past expo without really knowing exactly when the dates of the expo is. And then I bought the tickets and then I saw the email and said, Bob, when is the date of the expo? And he goes, yeah, so I'm yeah. working on it. And I said, make it before this. But I think oh, he was, so, oh, well, he was already going to make it before. It was already, he already had a, a vague idea. So I just, I basically lucked out. You did not. And no. so I don't know that you have, a, a lot of really, really good options. Uh, you know, Here's you can make what I was thinking. On the yeah. off day, 
Well, here's what I was thinking, because it's about a five and a half hour drive, okay? Which I was going to drive anyways. <laughs> so I was thinking about coming in on Thursday night because I saw Tootsie Pop. She had all these people going out for dinner. I felt, you know, it was fear of missing out. I had FOMO. So I'm like, you know, I could go Friday, Saturday to the expo. Right. My daughter could take the tickets to the Friday show with a friend or whatever. And then <laughs> I could come back. Then I miss, I miss the karaoke. You miss the better set list. Oh, see, you hit. <laughs> I'm thinking you have to do what Royal Slade says. Friday I didn't concert, see what he said. Drive in. Oh, Saturday no. Expo, Hell drive no, out, Royal Sunday Slade. Hell I think no. that's the you know, Well, honestly, I think you have to fly because driving <laughs> is. Too to much. Fly. I am not fly. driving. I would do that if it was oh, me. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I would do. So <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> So, so with the music, I do want to ask, who are your top three bands? Because you're so into music. Uh, it's Metallica, Tool, and a thousand others. Yeah. So, so, um, so Metallica, right, Tool, or that's no changing there. No, there would be no changing. And like, I don't know which one is actually at the top. I mean, I put Metallica at the top, but, uh, but I, you know, Tool's coming here February second to Dallas. I'll probably going to have to go to that, even though I've seen them. <laughs> more times than I can shake a stick at. I'm probably not going to miss another opportunity. You ever know when it's going to be the, your last chance. And I know I uh, guess, I Maynard's uh, 60th birthday show is going to be at Red Rocks. He's going to do a series of them, the singer for Tool. He's in a number of bands, people. And all the bands show up and play. I was at his 50th birthday at the Greek in Los Angeles. And uh, they all sit on the stage at the same time. So all the bands are like sitting there in lawn chairs, hanging out. And they just get up and kind of rotate around and play and in that one it ended up being three quarters of tool uh adam jones did not was not there but danny carey and justin chancellor were there and they did it was it was a fantastic show i've seen a lot of maynard's other bands puss fur and perfect circle uh many times done many meet and greets have met him many times uh <laughs> like it is the debut of his movie blood into wine which was at a small church in jerome arizona uh, so I was in a room with watching the screening of the the worldwide debut of his yeah. documentary with him and about 50 other people. Uh, and that was a good time. So, uh, I so didn't realize Tool was such a thing. Tool is a huge thing. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I can like, you know, it was so long between albums, right? The, the last album, Fear Inoculum, came out and it had been many, many years. And I think, what was I? Oh, I can tell you when I was listening to it, uh, it was uh, Lisa Ann and I went to a uh, concert, uh, Alice in Chains concert uh, that night in California. And we were driving back and I said, hey, we haven't heard this album yet. So she dials it up in her car and we listened to it because traffic is long. <laughs> Man, a great album. Oh, so good. And uh, and then I've seen the show now. I've seen them tour on that. I want to say two times and this will be my third. So Wow. And I've so, seen them many times before that. Also, so who's your next concert? Time. Who's your next concert coming up? Uh, that, so uh, I wouldn't mind going to see uh, Alice in Chains and Guns N' Roses because my buddies in Alice in Chains uh, is always. Great oh to see yeah, that. are you uh, in that? Are you in that? Uh, in the the fantasy I don't football play in the league. league. I don't play in the league, but I've been hosting it for the okay. last six or seven years. So they're just all great guys, and I have a great time. But they're doing it during football season, so I will not. I will not be. Uh, I will not be going to that one because I don't do anything during football season, except sit here and occasionally talk to <laughs> friends on podcasts and live streams and whatnot. Uh, so I don't, I rarely leave the house during football season. You're, you're on and on and on, on <laughs> Sirius XM. It's crazy. I'm, I'm like, and that's like just the, the tip of the iceberg. That's like, that's like my time off actually is uh, when I'm on the radio or doing live streams. Uh, the rest of the time is like a, a fervent race to, post information in in a timely fashion and the nfl is like a 365 day a year reality show they've done a great job of yeah. putting that together and i feel like every year i'm like the guy who follows the elephants at the circus with the shovel <laughs> cleaning up <laughs> after them and every year the circus adds two elephants and gives me a smaller shovel uh it's like uh you know it's just like it the the interest in the league right and the demand for information when i first started this the uh the uh you know the, the goal was finding information you know finding finding information now the goal is sifting 
through the vast array of information that's available and sorting it out so people have just the stuff they need. You know, it's like a bit of total, total switch. You know, back in the day, you were like crawling around the carpet looking for crumbs. <laughs> and and now it's like you're sticking a fire hose down your mouth and turn it on full blast. There's so much information available. So it's been a huge shift in how this works. But that's that's the bulk of my day is going through all that information, finding the pieces that are most necessary, putting them together in a way that, you know, people can better consume them and then taking brief breaks to talk about it on the radio and on the YouTubes. But, you know, I love it because, you know, Doug and I are always like driving in the car and whenever we're going, we hear uh, we hear your voice. And sometimes I tweet and I Doug and I are listening <laughs> and we laugh because, you know, you're <clears throat> always on, like you're always on. We have serious exam and you're always on. It's just so funny. And, and we love it. We love listening to you. And it's so informative. And, um, like I learn so much from you and and Doug all the time, and and this is amazing. And I love like you know I love seeing you. Um, I got hooked the first time I saw <laughs> the expo. Like like Wendy was saying. So I want to ask you this question. So most women um, they want to be um, um, your bestie, and oh, this question wait a minute, is. What? Yes. So most women wants to be your bestie. While I hear that some um, some women have really bad like um, um, with fantasy football uh, in general, they have um, they have like bad encounter with men. So why and what makes Bob Harris different? Um, I don't know. I don't view. I don't. I maybe I view people differently. I you know I'm kind of like pretty accepting of whatever anyone is and what they want to be and what they're doing. And, and like, I think when you have a common thread or share a common bond with people, which is fantasy football, I mean, it just seems like a natural progression. I don't really look at someone as like, oh, it's a lady or, oh, it's a man or, oh, it's, you know, I look at somebody, ah, they play fantasy football. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think it's, I think it's like that. And I, you know, and you know, without going too deep, I mean, I don't want to be, I think people want to be comfortable with other people and I don't feel like I'm put myself out there in a way that makes you feel like I'm talking down or, you know, not accepting of what you might be thinking, all those things. I think that's an important part of, you know, engaging with your audience is, is understanding that, you know, you're preaching to a choir and they're preaching back to you and to accept that and not sit there and pretend like I'm some high and mighty thing that, that, you know, like I'm the final word on anything. I'm not, it's just not true. And so I think whoever it is I'm engaging with, that's kind of the approach I take. You're I just, never... you're, yeah, you're super accessible to everyone. I mean, I, yeah. it doesn't I mean, matter. You always answer the questions. You're, I've never, never seen that um, uh, happen. So that's good. But, you know, I just don't understand. Okay. So first of all, I started listening to you uh, on my commute, okay, to back and forth to work. And usually it was in the mornings. I think it was with Mike Dempsey. Yeah. Um, so I, I started following you on Twitter and I, I started seeing your profile and you, you talked a little bit about your health journey. Mm. And your health journey is a little similar to mine. Um, but could you kind of elaborate on that? Because I don't know if a lot of people know that. And mm. I'm, I'm very proud of you for this. So yeah, you can go to my Twitter and see, uh, you know, there, so when I was, it was I want to say it was my 45th birthday. Somebody took a photograph of me and uh, there weren't not many photographs taken of me at that time uh, because I didn't want anyone to see me. I was a ginormous person. I was over 400 pounds and uh, sat in my apartment, just did my work. didn't want anyone to see me, didn't want to engage with anybody. I would not be doing things like this if that were the case, uh, you know, then. Um, but I saw that photograph. Uh, which again, I think it's pinned at the top of my Twitter profile or mm -hmm. the article that it's in. And, and I saw that photograph and, and it wasn't just that I was a, a ginormous person because I was, but it was also, I looked at my eyes, I said, man, I'm already dead and I just don't know it. Right. Nobody's told me. <laughs> I just, you know, when I got that picture in, in real life, someone gave it to me. I said, oh my gosh. I mean, I just look miserable. I look like I'm dead inside. And, uh, I said, I got to change some things. And so. Uh, so here's how I do things. I make a plan and then I make the plan better. And then I keep working at the plan. And that's what I've done. And I'm still doing it. It's, you know, been years now. 
uh, 17, I want to say 17 years since then. And uh, I keep trying to refine it and I try new things. But, but I mean, the original, the original goal was like, I sat down and said, I, I don't want to go on a diet. I need to have a diet, right? Like going on a diet is not not a success. Not, not a, it's not a plan for success. And I think that's, you know, when you make a plan, you want it to be, uh, to have an end point of success. And, and that was, uh, uh, that was the, the goal was I need to, I need to have a diet and I need to exercise and I need to set reasonable goals. And I thought my reasonable goal was I would reach, I would reach my high school wrestling weight in five years. I thought that's like, you know, that's a long timeline and gives me time to work at it. And it's not like overly aggressive. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it turns out it took me, I want to say, I think it took eight years and there were, so there were ups and downs along the way of those eight years, but, but, but it included, you know, starting out saying, okay, so I've got to exercise every day. Well, when I first started exercising, I could not exercise. Right. <laughs> so, but I live in a crappy little apartment and it had a crappy little exercise room. And I said, I need to give myself an hour a day to, to work on myself, to exercise. So I went in that little crappy room and I walked on the treadmill. And when I first started, I could walk about five minutes. And I, so I do my five minutes. I'd go sit in a chair in the corner of that crappy little room. And I'd spend the rest of that hour sitting there. And uh, over the course of time, more and more was exercise and less and less was sitting in the chair. And pretty soon it was all exercise. And, and then over the course of time, exercise became really important. And I think that's still to this day, I give myself more than an hour a day now, but I give myself that time and, uh, and I, you know, take care of, I still have a diet. Like I've adjusted it over time and I've tried different things. I've gone plant-based. I did plant-based for like seven years. And, uh, just recently, uh, last year went back to more, wanted to change the protein. I feel like I'm getting older. So, you know, you make some adjustments and I like to study a lot of things and, and come up with these things, but that's part of like having a plan, then making the plan better, right? Everything's an evolution. Keep working at it. It's just like fantasy football, just like creating content for fantasy football. If I just sat there doing the same thing I did in 1993, I would be nowhere. So you keep evolving and, and, and working on things. And, and I do that. I'm, I'm a, I am a, uh, uh, I, I a can't, workaholic? Let, yeah, I can't let anything go. Right. Like I, I, I can't sit here and say like, well, this is good enough. Yeah. Nothing is good enough. Not a single damn thing is good enough. It's Bob, how, mu you. how much weight did you lose total? Um, so I got down to my wrestling weight, which was a hundred. So I was, so I don't know how much I started out at because I had a scale that topped out at 375 pounds and I topped it out uh, easily. And so I want to say it took uh, almost a year to where I was down below Andrea. the, hi Andrea, down below the 375. So uh, I would say, you know, some amount over 400 pounds. Uh, then got down to, I think the low I got down to was about 189, which was about five pounds below my wrestling weight, which I was very happy about. And then since then, I, I and, and at the time I thought, God, I look horrible. <laughs> I, look like I'm, I look like I'm going to keel over. And so uh, I, I added a little more weight on and then, you know, and so at various times, like I've added more on than I want to, and I just kind of dial it back in and, and figure it out. <clears throat> so I'm, you know, sticking around right around 210 pounds or 215 pounds right now and and I'm uh feeling good right feeling feeling good, feeling good awesome. do my exercise every day put in my i mean that's you know i am like i am like uh the rain man character i am like <laughs> you know what if, if i have not exercised at some point in the day it's like uh, it's time for walking the ride you know I, I start getting all panicky and you know ideally i do my exercise <laughs> early in the day and get it out of the way but most days i cannot so then I'm sitting there going, how am I going to create this hour and a half I need to do what I have to do? And I will, sit here, <laughs> I will sit here and kill myself to get it done. I mean, literally. Okay, I'm like I'm the, I'm the slug of the group here. I haven't been to the gym in like two months. You need you need to come to my class. I know. We've got <laughs> Miss Zumba instructor over here on this side. Bob's on the treadmill every day. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, so I've gone through like various iterations. I've went through some, like for many years, I was like, I was into the uh, beach body thing. So I did like P90X, all the P90Xs, all the insanities uh, with Sean T. I love him. He's one of my favorites. Yes. Um, I tried them all. I went through every program they had there. And only recently did I, I, and then I, so recently, so, but as I got older, a lot of those were really high impact, high, you know, things that they are not good for my old feet. 
And so I yes. searched the Peloton like in the last, Please. I want to say Please. two years. Oh man, I want to, I want <laughs> a Peloton so, so bad. So now I'm addicted to that. And it turns out there are other people in the industry who are really big into that. And so it's fun getting together with them. JJ Zacharyson is like my super mentor. So you guys like Peloton. race each, you guys race each other and stuff. Well, you can see when other people are in the room, and it's really great. Like you'll be riding, and you can see him jump in and give you a high five and go. Oh, cool. oh. Or I'll see Marcus <laughs> Grant, or uh, you know, there's a lot of guys in there. Uh, Joe Dolan's in there, uh, so you see a lot of people in there, and you know, it's always fun. Liz Lowe's is big into it too. You know, and uh, Bob Lung and uh, Carla made an announcement when Bob was on our show that Carla is going to uh, have a Zumba class at the Expo. The official Zumba class of the Expo. I think it's necessary. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, gonna are you going to attend? Uh, I, will, I will bring my workout clothes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to have this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ask you talking about, you know, um, <laughs> Zumba and everything. If you could be a football player, like any football player in history, who would you be and why? Um, I would like to be uh, someone who passed away recently, Dick Buckus, um, because he was widely feared. No, I just love the way he played. I like his approach to yeah. his approach to football is like how I want to approach uh, life. Uh, I want to go out and crush it, right? I want to beat the K-pop out of it every <laughs> single snap, and uh, that's what. So when I was a kid, my dad was a huge fan of Dick Buckus, a, a number of players, but also in high school when we played football. Uh, we, uh, the coaches would play us Dick Buckus highlight things before our games to get us all <laughs> stoked up. So I loved him. There's many players. I'm, I like, you know, I like so many players, but I mean, if you, if you made me pick one, it would probably be him. That's awesome. how, how many actual, um, managed leagues do you play? And do you even know? Um, I have a vague idea. It's like 35 ish. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to say Sleeper has been like a what godsend. <laughs> sleeper makes – Sleeper is a, like the more Sleeper leagues I have, the more happier I'm going to be. Sleeper I can actually do on my phone while I'm sitting here. Like I have – tonight I have to start doing lineups uh, after I finish my uh, first big writing task of the week, which I do – I've done every week now for 30 years. It's like a 1,000 wow. words a team. And, and so it's a big time-consuming thing. And then I do my lineups – and I do them Tuesday night and I set them the best I can. And I'm a little bit, you know, cautious, you know, with injured players. I don't take too many chances because the odds of me getting back and adjusting all those lineups before kickoff are like slim to none. I try to go around like when I have spare moments, like on breaks on shows, I'm trying to run through lineups and, you know, trying to do the best I can to getting there. But like on Sunday, when things are happening, I'm on the air for the pregame show. I'm not changing a damn thing. I'm doing a pregame show. I'm writing updates in the breaks. I'm and if there's like a last minute injury, it is what I'm, it is. Yeah, I'm just, I'm that's 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 how it goes, right? So, yeah. uh, this is probably my big excuse. This is why I claim I make other people experts and you know, I help other people win championships because the chances I'm going to win some, I draft <laughs> fantastic teams. And if I don't have great luck and everybody doesn't stay healthy, working the waiver wire is not so, you know, like with that many teams, I'm not out there doing right. the working right. the waiver wire like people in my leagues are. Andrea knows, yeah. Andrea, by the way. <laughs> Andrea, I can tell you this, is a great drafter because I've watched her draft. Wow. She's super sharp, but she's out there uh, working away. <laughs> Royal Slade is out yeah, there working Andrea away. Best ball is the answer. I'm in a lot of best balls yes. as well. A lot of them with Royal Slade. Yes. Um, and best ball has been like, you know, kind of a godsend. I think it's a great way to, for me, it's it's a great way. You know, I jump into the best ball rooms like right when they open, right after the Super Bowl, <clears throat> and we start drafting. Because uh, it's great content to talk about, but also by the time the season gets there, I've made every decision possible, right? And so if someone calls and says or asks me on a live stream, "Hey, what about this?" I say, "Oh yeah, I've yeah, hundred times. What about it? <laughs> I already know. I already know. Do you like um, turn off your notifications on? Mm -hmm. Like you don't your phone is it, it must go off all the time, nuts. anyways. Yeah. Yes, yes, my phone is very. My, my phone and my Dick Tracy wristwatch are. <laughs> so, yes, I get a lot of notifications. And no, I don't turn them off. That's how work comes in, right? That's how I know what's going on for whether it's football information, uh, whether my leagues, you know. I do wish, like, Sleeper has been a godsend in that I can go down and sort through things really quick. It's like a single screen, tap, tap, fix things. Also, they send out a notification hey, you have somebody in a lineup that shouldn't, that oh, isn't yeah, going to play. That's, that's, well, that's 
Yeah. That's great, except it doesn't take me to that league. It takes me I to know, my main I know. sleeper screen and I go, well, which league so is it? Go each of them. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But you know what I will say? I was listening to Jeff Ratcliffe one day because uh, he's on Saturday mornings yep. on my way to work. And he he said, you know what? When the games start on Sunday, I put my phone down. I don't look at anything and I just enjoy the games. And that's what I started doing this season because I was just driving myself nuts. But when you're in so many leagues, it doesn't make sense to do that anymore. I put the phone down. I watch the game while well, I watch seven uh, hours of commercial free football on Red Zone. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. but, Plus a couple games. Yeah, you know, and then I look at the mm-hmm. end of the day or even the next day. So, so I, don't that was... at, I don't look at my scores until I set my lineups on Tuesday night. I, like, I don't know what the hell happened. I see the emails <laughs> come in. I look at the eliminator emails because I'm really interested in those. So when you have this many leagues, there are certain leagues that I want to do better in than others. They're like the Kings Classic leagues or have a little yeah. more importance or uh, leagues I'm in the league, you know, Scott Barrett from Fantasy Points has where it's like a ton of heavy hitters and I want to – you know, I want to I want to be competitive in that so I can, you know, look at Matthew Barry and shake my fist and say I got you and all that. So, you know, I mean, and so there are leagues where I pay a little more attention. But but for the most part, I do the same thing uh, when the when the pregame show is over. I sit down and uh, the red zone comes on. I have a couple other TVs with other games on if I want to watch entire games. But um, but I have my my other favorite, my other guilty pleasure, uh, my uh, DFS lottery tickets, my uh, tournament lineups. Wow. And so I'll sit there with my computer. I do sit there and watch the X and watch all the, you know, my tweet deck and watch all the streams go by of information. <laughs> and uh, as I'm watching my lineups and see how, if I'm making my way. So I do that, but, but I don't do any work. That's the one day I don't sit there Good for you. And, uh, and jam on the work. I have someone taking care of the news and stuff for the website and I just sit there and watch the games and then I pass out at some point then I wake up and watch more games. <laughs> I have to ask you this question before um, the episode is done. What's the biggest uh, misconception about uh, your industry and how uh, do you work to correct it? I remind people that I am not prescient, that predicting the future is tricky business and that yes. when I sit here and I work up rankings, and you're asking me to decide between four players, all of whom are ranked in the same tier of players, that I'm not going to sit there and pretend I can precisely, with granularity, accurately tell you what how many points they're going to score. It's your decision. You need to decide, right? I mean, if there's a, here's four guys that it's a really hard decision. Well, I'll tell you what I would do. But I mean, in the end, me pretending that I can tell you with certainty that this guy is going to finish 1.5 points ahead of this guy who's going to finish 2.7 points ahead of that guy. But honestly, there are people out there that expect that from you. I, 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 I see that. that. that, that we had a caller call the other night. Like, and he, uh, he called the week before, and we didn't, but he wanted to know if he had played. He called the week before and said, should I play Wandale Robinson or Josh Downs? So I think Josh Downs and the Colts were playing in Cleveland. And Robinson had been coming on, and we kind of talked through it and ended up going, let's give Robinson a shot, you know, just because this defense is really tough. And, you know, Gardner Minshew and tears up the Cleveland defense, and Josh Downs has a great game, and Wandale Robinson sucks. And so we get a call this week. Oh, hey, remember me? Yeah, you told me to play Robinson over Josh Downs. Like Casey well, like, didn't play this week. I was well, like in shock. Well, like, well, like, yes, we told you that because they were playing the Cleveland Browns. And, I mean, like <laughs> this is in people. The NFL is volatile. It's designed that way. It starts with the shape of the football. It's an oblong spheroid. It's designed to bounce funny ways. The rest of the league's rules are set up so every week. I think this. I want to say there's a number out there, and I have the number, and I'm going to bring it up because I think it's it tells you everything you need to know as you're if you're a fantasy football manager. We had this week, this year, 12 of 14 games uh, on, on Sunday were within one score in the fourth quarter. That brought the season total to 85 of 120 games. That's 70%. That's exactly what the league wants. They want this week to week volatility. And so it helped, you know, for us as fantasy managers, it makes life incredibly difficult. Um, but it, it also makes it really simple to know what you're after, right? You need to be after volume. Volume it doesn't always turn into points. As Joe Mixon, although it did last week, surprisingly okay. against San Francisco, who yeah. knew? Rashad White, tons of volume, doesn't always end up with a lot of points. But, but I mean, these certain players that are going to give you certain volume, you have to build around. 
and and then hope you find the right pieces uh, around them. And a lot of that is based on the matchups and, uh, you know, the the little bitty tidbits of information that we try to come up with that help you gain that little bit of an edge. But this is, the, you know, this is the thing about fantasy football that people don't get. There is no predetermined outcome, right? And sometimes the best decisions Definitely. don't lead to the best results. It's just, that's the facts. And, and so not everyone gets it, but you try to remind them, like, you know, again, you're just a passenger. It's like a NASCAR driver says well, when their car gets in a wreck. Well, at that point, I was just a passenger, right? That's, you know, once you set your lineup and you've made all I don't think I've the- ever heard a NASCAR driver say that. They yeah. say that when they, when they lose control of the car, right? There's, I just became a passenger at that point. And, and it's talking true. about the injuries, talking about the injuries, to, to sum it up I, as well, like, I didn't see a lot of injuries at the beginning of the season, like every single year. Do you think this year has been more than every single year? How do you see it this year, Bob? I think this is something we say every year because it seems like it every year. It seems like yeah. there are more injuries. And I think there are years where it's probably a slightly higher, but I don't think I don't think it's like ever like a huge spike. So I think every year there are tons of injuries. Like honestly, more players probably are hurt to some degree than not by the time the season's over. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and so, you know, the season ending injuries or to the big names are the things that draw our attention. Uh, but there are tons of injuries. I'd say, you know, I, I know a lot of people who like are worried about injury prone players or whatever. I'm injury agnostic because I understand that there, there, nobody is safe. Like we, we came into this year, you look at the, the, the top 12, let's say, if you weren't going to draft guys that have been injured, you could have drafted like four players, three players. And one of them got injured, by the way, Justin Jefferson this year, one of the players who had not been injured previously. Yeah. And most of them, uh, Bijan Robinson had not been injured because he's not played in the NFL. And so, I mean, that's just that's just how it works, man. It's a it's a it's a collision sport and players get hurt and you have to figure out ways to work around that when it happens. But but I do think that's always our perception. I feel like I get asked that question every single year is does it seem like more people have been hurt than ever before? And in the moment, it does. You're always going, yeah, it kind of does. But then you look at it in retrospect, and you kind of go, wow, it's just as many as always. It's just a lot. <laughs> and maybe there's been a lot, a lot of big names. I'm not the player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the player. Yeah. That's funny, maybe. Well, uh, uh, Wendy, Greg yes. was asking, uh, Greg was asking what you're wearing. So do you want to show him oh, what you're wearing? Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm going to try here. I have to back up because oh sorry about because that. what you're wearing is so beautiful i want everyone to see <laughs> i got my little pink and the pink. shoe and the poodle and everything Ooh, look at the... pink lady Ooh. look at that this yeah. looks like t- this, is, this is this is like a tv show thing <laughs> that's beautiful i just love it i can't she looks so beautiful. i have had this for like 20 years i mean you wear it once every few years so i just i tuck it away and i had it all ready for tonight so happy halloween to everyone i wore but my serious costume it's just more together. horrifying every year and I how many metallica t-shirts do you own oh so many <laughs> so many i think i need to sneak one from you bob yeah, well you know and bob bob honestly one more thing yeah. one more thing next week on sunday we need to fight you and i our teams are playing Oh, oh. Thirty in the morning. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't just wait. That's going to be so exciting. Um, Keep this so one Bob, next to you, Wendy. <laughs> oh, it's always next to me. You can anytime, Carla. Um, Bob, the reason, you know, one of the reasons we had you on, first of all, thank you for coming on tonight. Um, you, you know, too. you are a game changer. Like you are one of the OGs here. And uh, what you've done for the industry uh, you know, is I, I can't even imagine. I don't know if you know the magnitude of of your impact to the industry. So um, I thank you for being so kind. You've always treated me very respectfully. And uh, I also wanted to notice that you are let everybody know fantasy football writer of the year in 2005. You're in the Hall of Fame in 2013. I was reading your bio. You've got a lot of stuff going on, Bob. It's, it's it's like it's it's longevity. It's it's, it's if you do something long enough, you're gonna get something done. And, See, and, that's what I said. If I kept saying I was your bestie long enough, it would happen, and it did. Well, well I just want to say you guys are also out here changing the game, just showing that the content creation is not for right. you know a certain select group of people. It's for everybody. Everyone could jump in. Tusi Pop can jump in and say, uh, "By the way, it was great meeting, right?" 
great meeting you at the expo as well. But the uh, but that's the it's kind of the, you know th this whole ability to to just jump on a platform and 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 start you know making your case and and putting your thoughts out there. Uh, this is game changing as well, and you're part of that. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for yeah, coming tonight. So, um, and I'm going to tell you who our guest next week is going to be. And he's going to be super jealous that you were on before him because you always <laughs> seem to beat him out when it comes to these things. But our guest next week will be Howard Bender from Fancy Bender. Alarm. Yep. Bender. <laughs> hey, Bender, I'll keep the seat warm for you. But, Bob, <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you just in case they don't know? Um, that would be at Football Die Hard and uh, the footballdiehards.com website. Also, the Football Die Hards YouTube channel, the radio show on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio called Football Die Hards. I try to keep it simple, people. It's uh, easy to remember. And uh, and uh, so, yes, Football Die Hard is it. And, and check it all out and have a good time and uh, come see me on the live stream. I love talking and interacting with people. Oh, I can't. I love Saturday shows. I'm at work on Saturdays, but I make sure one way or the other, I'm going to hop on that live every Saturday. That That's something I definitely I look forward it. to. <laughs> you, should have, you, you have to, Indy. It's really, really entertaining. All right. But thank you again, everyone, sweet. for joining. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. And we also want to thank uh, the sports affiliation for letting us do the show tonight and the better vision. Uh, if you have an Apple phone, which I don't, my daughter won't allow me to have an Apple phone because she you said I'm an Android, Android person. No, Are you do yeah. Oh man. I am an Android person. She's like, you can't get an Apple phone because you'll be asking me how to use it. I don't have time for that. So I'm like, okay. So anyways, if you do have an Apple, please download their app. It's a really cool app and I'm waiting. I know that the, they're trying to get it for the Samsung also. So um, thank you again to everybody. And I think that'll be it for us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you. Good night.